Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to be working on a, a homemade uh, longer chainsaw bar for my electric chainsaw, my CS uh, Oregon CS uh, 1500 chainsaw, and uh, also I'm going to be modifying uh, the chain on that saw and doing a test with that. So I got two old bars here that I'm basically gonna gonna be cutting here at this point because this is kind of the point where they're the same width here and I'm gonna be TIG welding the two together and I don't know how well this is gonna work but I'm gonna give this a try I'm gonna weld this bar with this bar and then I'll make basically a longer bar so the total length of the new bar will be about 29 inches and I know you're thinking, oh no, that saw doesn't have the power to run that bar, Jack. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, if you watched the previous video, you'll notice that um, what I do with this uh, technique here is I'm basically cutting with just the very tip, tip of the bar. So there's really only this much of that bar cutting in the wood. And the reason I want to make it longer is because... Uh, I've got this uh, giant hemlock in the back of the house here uh, down the hill that broke last year. Oh, sad day for trees today. My wife and I were just walking around to our property making trails for the spring so we don't have to do it while the tick season's on and uh, we discovered one of our giant trees here has fallen. So this is a uh, Probably, uh, this might be our biggest tree. One of them anyway. This tree has to be a good 36, 40 inches. Uh, the center of it is hollow. So, like I told my wife, we're going to make lemonade out of these lemons. So this tree is going to end up as something I'm going to build in a future project. So... And there's two pieces of, of it, another piece on this side. Um, it fell and it left this huge opening here. It's a very big opening. What I'm trying to do with this bar is uh, basically slice that thing up and make some giant boards. Uh, so I got that one to do and I want to also do... Um, that pine that I cut early last year, I left the stump there, so I'd like to slab that up uh, with uh, this uh, future sawmill design here. So, but first things first, let's see if I can make a bar. And I'm using two old bars for this. These are all like this one's all bent, and so is that one. So, um, and it's just a test. If these work great, uh, what I'll do is I'll get these are both 16 inches. So I'll get two 18 inches and I'll combine the 18 inches uh, and maybe uh, a section out of this. Uh, hopefully give me, uh, I'd like to get down to about 40 inches or something like that eventually. I'm not worried about flimsiness here because like I said, um, I'm just going to be putting a little bit of torque on this very end here. So this bar doesn't need to be super strong. Um, I can take smaller cuts if I need to just take multiple passes at smaller cuts here to to get down so, so I bought myself a, a brand new Diablo Steel Demon blade here that's what I'm gonna use in to cut this thing if I'm honest I don't know what I'm doing if I'm honest don't know who I am All I see is a man who's waiting for a wake-up call Wow I don't know what this stuff is made of But it's extremely hard, harder than stainless steel it chipped a tooth here. Whatever this is made of is really hard.
I mean, I can file it with the file so it's not hardened. I don't know what it is. Ah, the size of this is hardened. See, you hear that? The center isn't, but the edge, this edge here, is hardened. Very hard. Hmm. All right. Well, that was unexpected. I've just uh, accepted the fact that this is basically a sacrificial blade, um, and I'm going to go through a bunch of these. So I plan to buy like five packs of these at a time for the projects I want to do. But uh, I'd rather have this than a, a special saw because I looked at the cost of the blades and the bigger the blade, the, the more expensive they get. And I'm not thinking that they'll last any longer than this one. So, uh, But yeah, you could easily pay like a 12 inch blade or a 10 inch blade $120. This is 50 bucks, so. So I grab a little bevel in here on each side so I can fill this up with some, uh, some filler. Um, I don't know what this is going to be like. This bar is actually thinner than this one. So I've got a little, couple little tiny shims under here so I can keep it straight. And uh, we'll see when it comes out. <laughs> what? Got to try stuff. Um, of course, you know, when, I, when I'm going to cut with this thing, I'm going to have all my PPE on and everything just in case this thing breaks and chain goes flying. But. So I got this thing welded together. Seems like it's holding pretty good. Um, now, the gap in here, uh, as soon as I started welding this, because this is twice, uh, three times thicker than the edge here, as soon as the heat got close to the edge, this thing just blew apart. So I had to just basically fill it in. And I'm gonna use a, a cutoff wheel, which is exactly the width of this, to, to make this groove inside. So I should be able to get a, a groove that's very close to the original and uh, I know it's kind of rough looking but good enough for a test for now this works better uh, this works good what I'll do next time is uh, I won't make a little I'll just make a V groove in the middle here and I'll leave the edges flush because I noticed that I was able, actually able to uh, just with the heat seal those shut 
So if I wouldn't have, uh, if I would have just ground a little bit of a V shape in the middle here and left the, the edges straight, I could have just put them together much easier, I think. Um, so I'm going to grind that little groove here and then I'll show you guys what I'm going to do with the chain. So I'm going to be using the Power Sharp chain. These are used, like very badly used <laughs> uh, Power Sharp chains. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify them. I'm going to get rid of the breakers here. So this is the tooth that cuts and I'm going to get rid of the raker that's in front of it here. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm just cutting with the nose piece. I don't need this junk here. All this does is it stops the nose piece from cutting deeper. And because I'm only going to be cutting, well, let's say four inches, five inches, uh, <clears throat> I think this tooth with some space here and another tooth will, will basically be able to take a larger chunk of wood. So then I'm going to just be grinding off some of these little nubs here uh, the in between ones here okay on one side and then I'll come back after and what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually take this this back piece here and I'll weld uh, the little stud that comes out to the front so I ground those off you can see on a couple places here and I'm gonna try to separate the links Alright, so I got the two chains apart. I got my bar made, my new bar, so this is going to look pretty cool. <laughs> uh, now I need to measure the length of the new chain, so that should be interesting. Alright, so I wrapped this chain around here. And then, what I want to do here, I get a measurement of my chain length. I got a broken link here. Hey, back to the grinding board. <laughs> All right, so I got the chain on there. Seems to uh, be the right length here. So the next step is to weld the uh, the little piece on this side. So. I got one link is right here. There's two links in this because and then I got one link over here. So I got two little four little welds to do. Should be able to go give this a try. So just gotta put a little tack weld right on there and right on there. Those two little knobs, that should do it. Daddy gets an upgrade. <laughs> this uh, self-sharpening system only has one flaw that I see. What tends to happen is the if you look at you you have a tooth and then you have two two of these rakers and then another tooth. So you tend to have more wear on the stone in the middle because there's twice as much middle as the actual tooth so what I've been doing is I've been grinding down these separately and that makes the actual stone uh, reduces the wear on the stone and, and then it also can grind these these teeth more straight so this is an old chain really old actually uh, probably this these two are probably my first two chains that I bought I think I've bought I'm on my 
third chain right now. Um, um, so my plan is to get more life out of this chain by getting rid of these and then I've got a brand new stone in there and then I'm gonna slowly sharpen these teeth and see where it leads. I'm just using a, a cutting wheel on the grinder so this hopefully will go faster. So you can see here, I basically ground off this area in the chain here. And I left the tooth. Okay, and what I'm going to do now, i got a brand new stone, so I should be able to get this tooth nice and flat. And it's not very aggressive because there's nothing left to it, so obviously if I did a brand new chain, this would work better. But it's just for a test. And I don't intend to use this bar very, very long. I've got basically two trees that I want to do with this. Better. I mean, I'd say most of the like these chains, I, I stopped using them because they weren't uh, worthwhile using anymore. So most of the the tooth is gone off this thing. Normally the tooth's quite a bit higher, and that grips more. This thing's got very little teeth left, but it's still still working, and it's more aggressive than it was. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the new chain I got. So I did the same thing on uh, my other chain. So this one's brand new, pretty, well, pretty new. You see me use it on, a, on the sawmill there last time. So it's a fairly new chain. So I did the same thing. I cut off the rakers on this. I'm just gonna give this thing a try and uh, see how that compares. That thing just wants to destroy wood. Like it is uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, yeah, it literally wants to destroy that wood. So I think this is gonna work really well in the the uh, chainsaw mill. Uh, so I guess I'll give you guys an update on that. Oh, wait, one more thing. There will be a video before that one. All right, video I'll be posting after this will be my upgrade rocket stove uh, so I've got the hopper finished so basically I'll be putting the wood in here inside and there's a little slot wood will slide in so this will be my automatic feed and uh, I'm gonna be also using uh, I've upgraded the motor I've got a power supply I can adjust from 0 volts to 24 volts lots of amperage so I should be able to hopefully make this thing melt so that's the, the goal is uh, get this thing as hot as possible in uh, the next video so yeah so watch for that video coming up out of this one if you like this uh, this video like subscribe guys and uh, make sure you don't miss this one with the rocket stove uh, yeah bye for now